this is a great place to take a summer vacation. But this New York Mini Series has been anything but a vacation for our monster truck drivers. That's true, Stan. These guys wish they were on a vacation, but they're here racing. They've been doing 12 shows in 17 days from Buffalo to West Lebanon. Now, I did this series last year, and I know what it takes, and it's a lot of hard work. Now, if these guys would break something or have problems with their vehicles in the show prior and have to drive 100, maybe 200 miles to the next show, they got to get that vehicle fixed no matter what so they're able to run in the next night's competition. Okay, let's go down trackside with TNT Motorsports' Mike Goss for his trackside perspective. Thanks, Stan. One of the reasons why TNT's New York Mini Series is so grueling is because it's the very best trucks in the country going head-to-head. -head. They get after each other. Another reason is a track like this here in West Lebanon. We've got to run the near lane on pit row, which means that the guardrails are tight on the cars. If a truck gets off the cars, he can do a lot of damage. Only a very experienced driver is going to win out of this lane. Well, as our drivers are getting ready for tonight's race, planning their strategy, we'll get set for round one action from the Lebanon Valley Speedway in just a moment. Is this Valley Speedway, Stan Rhodes along with Rich Hooser, and we have so many races we're going to get started right away. It will be USA 1 taking on Buffalo Tremor. As you can see right there, Stan, he handed him the kill switch. Now, what this does, he plugs that in inside his cab, and the official at the end of the track has control over that vehicle in case it gets out of control. So, Rod Litzow taking on John Kwasniewski. And Litzow gets a great start there, but seems uh, Buffalo Tremor's having problems at the very starting line. Now, Litzow's just taking it real easy here. He knows he's got the win, gets a little bit of a wheelie there for a nice finish. Well, he took the easy win, and Buffalo Tremor never got off the start line. He never hit the first set of cars. I'm not sure exactly what happened. His engine died. It might have been trouble with that kill switch, but we'll have to wait and see. So now it's going to be the former rodeo champion, Bennett Clark and Clydesdale taking on Marvin Smith and Stomper 2. This ought to be a good one. Now, Clydesdale's a pretty new truck here. It's not the same truck he ran last Whoa. year. He had a little problem. He come up against that guardrail. Oh, that's going to hurt him bad. See, and Stomper's going to take it. He gets a little out of shape there at the end there. Well, Stomper nonetheless takes that win. Okay, let's look right here, Stan, is what we talked about earlier. This lane is real narrow, and them guardrails are real close to them cars. And as you can see, Bennett Clark got a little bit crooked off them cars, and his rear tire hit the guardrail there, causing them sparks to fly up from his wheel. Good thing he didn't flip. So next, it's going to be David Morris out of Springfield, Tennessee, in the equalizer. He'll take on in the near side lane, Nightlife, driven by Dave Wiseauric out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Well, Wiseauric's got his work cut out for him here, Stan. Equalizer's a fast truck. He's got a lot of suspension that works good, and he's going to take an easy win here. He doesn't clear all them cars. He's holding that equipment for the final right. Good win. That's why he's number two in national points. Of course, let's take a look at Equalizer's run here. Now, he can see why Zorik from his driver's side window, so he knows where he's at, and he can see that he's pretty much caught up with him, but as soon as he hits the ground, his suspension's working, and he can hit the, hit the pedal and just take off, and it takes a nice, easy win. David, the track looks pretty rough. Tell us about it. Yeah, this track, you got one lane that you might call a good lane, and the other lane... I, I think it's actually better than the one I call the good side, but it, you got a real tight quarters racing down in between those guardrails, so it's going to be a tough race. No doubt about it, and a tough one for Mad Dog. Driven by John Breen out of Jefferson City, Missouri, up against Steve Kane out of Killeen, Texas, in that 44-inch wide awesome Kong. It's going to be a good race now. Mad Dog's got a lot of experience, a little bit more than Kane does, but Kane's got all kinds of horsepower in that awesome Kong. You can see right there, as soon as he hits the ground, he just takes off like, Whoa. oh, look at that. Backing up a little, what happened there, Stan, is his back tires barely caught that last car, and that's what flipped him up. So Steve Kane taking the win in Awesome Kong as he takes that nose dive, and he's got a good win. Steve, a little wild there at the end. What happened? Uh, it felt like a nose dive real bad, but uh, I believe I, I had it under control, I hope. What do you do to drive out of that? Uh, you just mash on the gas and hang on. And here's a guy looking for a win, Bob Breen in wild hair out of Jefferson City, Missouri, taking on the Jersey Outlaw, Mike Wine out of Pensacola, New Jersey. And this ought to be a close race here, Stan. Now, both of these trucks right now don't have a lot of horsepower like a few of these other guys we've been seeing. As you can see, these guys aren't clearing a lot of cars. They're just driving over the top of them. Jersey Outlaw with a tremendous lead over Wild Hair. It's a little surprising, but Wild Hair is only running a big block Chevrolet with a single carburetor. Well, good win for him, and it seems all the winners are in that far side lane. Yeah, so far now, these guys in this left lane, it's real narrow quarters, and I think it might have him a little bit concerned about it. As you can see there, Jersey Outlaw's got a lot of room, and Wild Hair's got to take it nice and easy. All right, a good win there for Mike Wine.
Mike, nobody has won out of this near lane tonight. You haven't run in it yet, but have you watched the other trucks? Yeah, I've been watching the other trucks, and it's a very rough lane, and the guardrail's hard factor right there. I ran in a lane like that about a week ago. I broke both my knuckles and both my hand, both my fingers, two places. So I prefer to stick in the right lane if I can, but it's pretty rough, too. You bounce like a basketball. Well, that near side lane is giving a lot of problems. Let's see if John Moore can handle it. In no problem, he'll take on Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. This will be a good race here, Stan. Now, these guys are both very competitive runners. And no problems. Got a new truck this year along with Porter. And look at this. Prob no problem. Staying right up oh. with Gary. Oh, he got a little close to that guardrail, and that's going to hurt him right there. It sure is. Just like Bennett Clark and Clydesdale, John Moore had problems, but he managed to keep going. But Carolina Crusher got the win. Okay, as you can see right there, he got real close to the guardrail. Let's go down to Mike Goss. Gary, if Bigfoot wins this next race, that puts you up against him. But I tell you what, things have really evened up. It's not necessarily true that he's king of the monster trucks anymore. No, it doesn't. I think he'll, well, he would definitely will have lane choice if he does win this round. And uh, I'm going to have to give it all I have to take to win, which I think I can. Well, that lane choice is important. So there you see Kid Rarick. He's in the Thunder Chicken out of Catawissa, Pennsylvania. And now taking on that Ford Bigfoot. Of course, Andy Brass driving Bigfoot this year, and he's doing a good job doing it. Now, let's see what happens. He gets a little bit of a hole shot on Thunder Chicken. Uh, looks like Andy's uh -oh. having big problems with Bigfoot. He uh, sure is. He's pretty much stopped right there. I'm not sure what happened so far, Stan, but Thunder Chicken's going to take this win. He's got a good win. I wonder what indeed did happen to Bigfoot. Well, he hit over the first set of cars, and he didn't clear me. He's had problems right there from the very beginning. It, he might have broke a transmission, a drive shaft. Uh, it's hard to say. There's no engine problems that don't look like it. There's no smoke coming out or anything. Well, up until now, we've not had any winds out of that uh, near side lane, and this has been the first one. Mike Goss is going to talk with the winner. Kid, that's the first race anybody's won out of this near lane. What's this lane like? This lane's real bad. Uh, there's a hole right out there, and I have my auto automatic rear steering on. I just uh, put in it. And figuring on that when I hit that hole, the rear steering will correct it, and it did a little bit, but Bigfoot, I was waiting for Bigfoot to come on and go past me, and I figured something was wrong. Well, now it's Grave Digger, driven by Dennis Anderson out of Chesapeake, Virginia. He'll be taking on Bill Weaver in Rambo. He's out of Hastings, New York. Now, Bill Weaver Jr. usually drives this truck, but his dad's driving tonight, and he's doing a pretty good job right now to keep up with Anderson. But I tell you what, Anderson's one of the crowd favorites here tonight. He takes it nice and easy over that second set of cars because he knows he has the win. Good win for Gravedigger, and indeed, Bill Weaver had trouble right there after uh, the guardrail. Yeah, of course, they're getting a little bit close to that, and they don't like getting too close. Now, Anderson had a lot of room over there. He gets a little crooked before he hits that second set, but he does a great job. He hits it and gets a good win. Let's go down track side with Mike Goss. Dennis, you've had a long couple of weeks. You had a long day putting your truck back together, a lot of drivetrain problems. Is it holding up so far tonight? Yeah, so far. I really haven't uh, put it to the wood yet, but what I'm trying to do is save the truck. I want to get into finals with it, but it's a pretty rough course. I'm going to draw USA 1 next. i got to run hard. I'm going to be in the left lane. The left lane is definitely a bad lane to be in, so I'm afraid that I'm going to bust a tire on this guardrail, so I either i got to take that chance. You know, i got to try to beat him or break the truck. Well, right now, we're going to try and find out what happened to Bigfoot, and Mike Goss is standing by to talk with Andy Brass down at trackside. Andy, what happened to Bigfoot? Well, we're not really sure. You know, we think we either got a torque converter or we broke the input shaft. Uh, we had the same problem here the other night. We busted the torque converter, and we had to put a stock shaft back in it because we couldn't get a hardened one out, and we figured, well, we didn't know how long it was going to last on us. Now, we've been hearing lots of rumors about a new racing truck for Bigfoot. What's happening there? Well, we got the new truck design built, and we've been testing it now. It's just kind of, you know, still in its testing stages. We haven't had it out on, you know, out of this really a show yet. We're still trying to get the body put on the truck, but actual, actual frame, suspension, and everything, motor, and it's all running. So a tough break there for Bigfoot, and we'll get set for round two action here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway right after this. Speedway, Stan Rhodes along with Rich Hooser, and we are ready to get started with round two action. First will be Dennis Anderson in that uh, unusual grave digger. He's out of Chesapeake, Virginia, somewhere a 1940s Chevy. And he'll be taking on USA One, another Chevy driven by Rod Litzow. He's out of Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Okay, Stan, this is going to be a race that a lot of people have been waiting to see. Here's two guys with a lot of horsepower and a lot of guts, and that's what it takes to run in this track. 
And I tell you what, here, Grave Diggers had a little bit of smoke coming out the back. It gets a little crooked after that first set of cars, and Liftoff's going to win this one. Well, so far, it has been that uh, far side lane, Rich. It sure hurt Anderson right here. And he, they're both pretty close right here after the first set of cars. But watch what happens to Anderson. As soon as he bounces off there, his rear end swings around to the left-hand side a little bit, causing him to let off the gas. Well, good win for Rod Litzow. Rod, you're showing me you really want to defend this title. Yeah, I, I like this track, and I'm hooking up. I got the lane I want. I think everything's going to go good the rest of the night. You know, Gray Digger's a hard runner, and I just, you know, that made me run hard in the, early in the race here to see if the truck was going to react. Now I know where I can run, and it's going to help me all night. Of course, Stan, uh, lane choice is very critical on a track like this. Now, Equalizer had a faster qualifying time than Stopper did, so he's going to have lane choice here, and that's going to be very good for him. Well, he indeed is going to be in the far lane. He'll take on Marvin Smith in Stopper, and he uh, qualified seventh. He's out of Arnold, Missouri. Of course, here, he's going to be in that narrow lane, and that's going to be a disadvantage for him. Not only that, he's a little under horsepower compared to that equalizer, and it shows right there. Look at equalizer when he hits that ground. There's just no bounce at all, and he's got a lot of control over that vehicle, and to take a great win over Stopper. Well, equalizer, he ran very straight. Stopper had the problems right here after the second jump. That's right. After the, the first set of cars at the end, is there, everybody's having their problems. They do a little bounce in there, and they got to let off the gas because they don't want to hit that guardrail. And here where it shows where equalizer just, just takes off away from Stopper and leaves them in the dust. So now it's going to be Steve Kane out of Killeen, Texas. He's got that kill switch to put in to Awesome Kong. He's got a great truck here, a very narrow truck, only 44 inches wide, and he's going to take on the Jersey Outlaw in the near lane, Mike Wine. Of course, uh, Jersey Outlaw here has not quite uh, got the horsepower that Austin Kong does again. So Austin Kong has got the wide lane. He's got a lot of room to run it, and he can really open that truck up. But you know what? Jersey Outlaw is giving him a run for his money right here. This is a little surprising, Stan. Well, Austin Kong still beats him. He sure did. Jersey Outlaw just didn't quite have enough. They went him right there standing that first set of cars, but as soon as they got down in the flat ground, Awesome Kong just opened up that horsepower to, to just blow him away at the finish line. Well, Steve Kane didn't quite have the problems he had before, but he did take the win. Steve, it's possible you're going to have Carolina Crusher, who's right at the top of the national points in the next race. How will you race against him? Uh, I'm just going to race my own race. I'm going to go out there and just go as fast as I can, and, and uh, I feel that I can beat him. I beat him before. I feel I can beat him again. Well, the story so far is that far side lane, and there you see Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. He's doing real well. Top of the points right now, he'll take on Kid Rarick in Thunder Chicken, who did win in that near lane, and that was because of uh, the mechanical problems of Bigfoot. Right, and that's the only truck that has one in that lane, and uh, we'll see if he's going to try it again. He's got the same lane. Now, he ran it once. He might have a little experience to know how to hit it, but Carolina Crusher is just out horsepower him right there. Hits the second set of cars, doesn't quite clear him. He's keeping his truck under control, and he just blows him away. Again, the problems was in that near lane, Thunder Chicken. And he is a little bit under horsepower. Gary Porter's got a lot of horsepower in this new truck that he built for this year. After last year running, I raced him many times, and he always kept up with me pretty good, but he's doing tremendous this year. All right, Mike Goss is down at trackside. Let's check in with him. Gary, you know Awesome Kong's got lane choice. He's going to push you into this near lane. He's going to be able to drive it and win. I think I can. I've been looking at the, uh, you know, the lanes real close tonight, watching all the trucks, and uh, I got a different way I'm going to set up on the line than everybody else has, and I think I can drive it and take the win. Well, he's going to move us into the semifinals and the first bracket, USA 1 against Equalizer. And of course, USA 1, Rod Littow is going to have lane choice, so he's going to put Equalizer in that close and narrow lane. And then Awesome Kong taking on Carolina Crusher. And of course, Awesome Kong's got lane choice here again, and like Mike asked him earlier, He's going to put Caroline in there, but he thinks he can win. Well, the lane choice is the question, and we'll continue with more action in just a moment. Stay with us. To the Lebanon Valley Speedway, Stan Rhodes along with Rich Hooser, and we're here in West Lebanon, New York. Good crowd on hand here, and they're ready and set to get started with our semifinals. And there you see the track. The cars are already crushed. And our first race will feature USA 1. Rod Litzow taking a moment to perhaps uh, back up a little, Rich. Yeah, and he's going to get lined up straight. Now, he's going up against Equalizer in this round. Now, Litzow's got his lane that he wants. He's got a lot of room. But now, I'll tell you what, he's still going to be a little intimidated by Equalizer here. Dave Morris, he's got a good run. Been, so far, he's been doing great. And uh, Litzow's going to have to do everything he can to take this win. Certainly is. So we're set, ready to go, waiting for the green light. There it is. 
And I'll tell you what here, it looks like Litzow got a little bit of a hole shot on Equalizer. But, uh-oh, oh, Litzow got a little bit crooked after that first set of cars. Look Equalizer at that. Equalizer just clears the whole last set. He blows Litzow away. Unbelievable. As a matter of fact, Rich, that was a fast run for Equalizer in 8.36. And, of course, and look at the lane it was in, the lane that nobody has won in tonight except for Thunder Chicken because Bigfoot broke. And Mike Goss is with Dave Morris with Equalizer. David, the word in the pits before the semifinals was a lot of people close to racing said you could not win out of that lane, but you proved them wrong. Yeah, uh, I watched a few of the trucks in the first heat races there, and there, if you hang over toward the left side of that track, it's just the cars are getting mashed off to that side, and that way it throws you right into the guardrail. So what I tried to do that time was just run right on the roofs and let my tire hang off the edge of the hood of them. So. It worked fine. Well, a good win there for the rookie, but let's find out what happened to Rod Litzow. Mike? Rod, everybody said that lane was the best lane. What happened out there? Well, I think uh, looking at the cars and that, they're getting some dew on them. And when I powered out, she just got squirrely on top of the hoods and threw me off. And it's either that or I got to go back to the pit if I broke a locker, which kicked me that far off. You know, usually it wouldn't kick off that far, but I think I'm spinning so, usually using that much horsepower on top of those cars. I just start spinning, and she just will kick. If one catches, that's what will happen. Now, what Litzow was talking about there, Stan, is these lockers and these rear ends is like a positive track unit. And if he breaks one with the size of the tires and the horsepower these guys got, just a one tire spin is going to throw them off sideways. So there you see the kill switch going in to the Carolina Crusher. He's going to take on Awesome Kong in that far lane and the green. And he says he can beat him in this narrow lane. It looks like he's doing a tremendous Ooh. job so far. Awesome Kong's got a little bit of a lead right there, but, oh, just Carolina Crush just flies by him at the finish line. Boy, he certainly crushed him. Unbelievable. And out of that near side lane. And look, they both hit that first set of cars just at the identical same time. Awesome Kong on the ground first, but here's where Carolina Crusher just uses his horsepower. Not quite as much air as Awesome Kong. And there's where he just flies by him at the finish line. Uh, Steve Kane is shocked. He thought he won the race. Steve, did it look from your viewpoint like you edged it out? Uh, it, it did to me. Uh, I heard my motor popping, though, when I was going down through there. But uh, I sure felt I won. But I guess not, according to the video. Well, Rich, indeed, a photo finish. Yeah, that's one thing that's good about these videos. And that's where it can show that it was a real close race. Mike Goss is standing by with Gary Porter. Equalizer won the other semifinal out of the same lane. Did you watch him closely? Yes, I watched him real close. You know where he lined up on the cars, and he lined up exactly where I had planned to line up, and I seen it work good for him, so I went through with my plans. Are you going to get him? I'm going to give it everything I got. I think I can. You know, he's a real strong runner, but I'm going to have to run him down. Okay, well, this is going to be a tough race. Equalizer's going to have the lane choice here. Now, he likes that inside lane, so let's see if he's going to take that and put Porter in the, in the wide lane. All right, let's find out Mike's thoughts about the finals. Well, thanks, Stan. Carolina Crusher and Equalizer shocked everybody by winning out of this mere lane, puts them both in the finals. I just talked to David Morris, who has lane choice. He's going to stay in this near lane. He thinks he's figured it out. Plus, he thinks the far lane is shooting the trucks too far up in the air. Let's find out who's going to win it. Well, the battle's ready to go. Equalizer, David Morris, he's going to stay in that near side lane. He's done real well. And Gary Porter in the far side lane, putting the kill switch in in the Carolina Crusher. And of course, what Morris talked about in that far lane, it might be a little bit wider, but the ramps are a little bit steeper, and they're getting more air, so they're losing time. And here, Equalizer's got a little bit of a jump on Porter. It's real close at the finish. It looks like Equalizer wins it. Another close win, but we have Equalizer, the champ of this one. Boy, he's got that inside lane figured out. Just watch his truck run. It's pretty much state of the art right now, monster truck racing. This guy gets on the ground, his tires must be made of Velcro because it doesn't bounce at all, and he's got enough horsepower to just clear that last set of cars and take a nice win. All right, well, let's go down track side and talk with the winner. Well, the Equalizer knocks off Carolina Crusher here at Lebanon Valley Speedway. Now, Gary, tell us about the run. Well, it wasn't the way I wanted it to go. He beat me off. You know, I thought I had a good run in the right lane to come off the first set of cars real good. And I don't know if it just had me out motor to walk, but I got to go home and do some more homework so I can come back and take a win some other day. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. David Morris is your winner. Now, David, heard a little sputtering maybe on the starting line. Gary definitely got a whole shot on you. Yes, he did. Uh, I was awful late coming off at second set of cars when I landed 
I was in the gas hard. I've been having trouble with it all night. It wants to splutter out. I don't know if it's fuel too rich, flooding or what, but I thought there was for a minute I wasn't gonna be able to catch him. You guys have developed quite a rivalry, haven't you? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so congratulations once again to our winner for Rich Hooser, Mike Goss. I'm Stan Rhodes. Join us again for Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network.